the Bible say about hate? You know, like, what is hatred and what does it look like? That's what we're going to be talking about today. As we look at hatred, you say, let's just start with the definition. Hatred is a deep and emotional extreme dislike. When you just really don't like someone, but it's not just sort of a detached thing. We'll talk about apathy at another time where you're like, I just don't care. I don't care about them. No, no, no. Hatred is very different. You are emotional about it. It's not like you just write them off. You are vehement at, at you know, aiming anger in their direction <clears throat> as regularly as possible. And you hope that they catch on to it. You're wanting to make sure they know all about it and everybody else you're around knows all about it. It's a very deep-seated, emotional, extreme dislike. A little story. She says, I hate him. I hate him because he left me and our two children homeless. So he could go mess around with some trashy woman. We spent five years together, two of which we were married for. Our daughter was in the hospital. And he decided to abandon my son with my mother. And my daughter with me at the hospital. So he could go sleep with this girl. I should have seen this coming when he told me he wanted to move to another city. The city where she lived. I should have known. But I gave him the benefit of the doubt. And allowed him to move out there two months before I did. I didn't expect him to do what he did. This man told me he wanted to leave me on our two-year wedding anniversary. He kicked me and his two children out of our house with no money and nowhere to go. I hate this man. He screwed me and his children. Now he won't pay child support because he's too broke. Now you're picking up on hatred there. That, that has some pretty big anger. She may be justified in it, but it's that kind of anger that just stays down deep in you. You can tell this has been a little while, and she's still just fuming with this uh, anger that's turned into a hatred, even by her own words. And you can say, but, but sometimes I deserve to hate the person. I deserve to hate them, so isn't that different? Well, maybe you do. Maybe you do deserve to hate the person. Maybe what they did is so terrible, it's unforgivable. I mean, what this lady was saying is a terrible thing, and it happens all the time. Regularly, this kind of thing happens. But if you continue to hate this person, what's that going to do to you? See, you're really wanting to punish them. That's the kind of thing, you know. Uh, Jesus said, when you have an enemy and they strike you, they hurt you, you're just doing what? Turn the other cheek. And he understood something that most of us don't get. There's different levels of this. And, and I mean, and he's down there at the ultimate level, looking at this kind of thing and saying, free yourself from them. But see, I've never understood why when somebody hurts you, you want to keep hurting yourself to prove a point to them. I think that's a pretty crazy level to be at, <clears throat> of just saying, I'm going to keep hating you the rest of your life. And, and although this will probably destroy me on the inside, hopefully some of it will rub off on you too. You know, I'm much more of the idea of, you know, I'd love to say I'm always where Jesus was on this. You know, much more of the idea of, if I'm that mad at you, I'm just going to slug you kind of a thing. You know, you hurt me, I'll hurt you back. You know, and you say, but again, what does that do? It, it just opens up the door for more trouble, for you and for that person. The best thing you can do is let that go. You say, but, but they deserve it. They don't deserve that kindness. No, they don't. But you do. After all the hurt they put you through, why let them hurt you anymore? Why give them that power over you? Anybody that has that kind of power over you is still in control of you. You don't have self-control of that. And you say, well, what does it do to me? Well, it wrecks your nervous system. Your nervous system is constantly working and eventually can become overexerted, leading to a weakened heart, stiff arteries, there's potential for liver and kidney damage, as well as high cholesterol. It gives this other person control of our emotions, so not only does it physically hurt us, it emotionally just tears us up to hold on to hatred. And spiritually, hatred destroys us, and God commands us to let it go. Why? Because he's never been angry before or hated people? Not at all. So the difference is he knows he's right, he knows when there can't be any repair, and he knows how to deal with it. For us, he goes, you know, let all those who love the Lord hate evil. That's it. You catch that? What are we supposed to hate? Evil. Evil people? No. Evil things, evil deeds, evil actions? Absolutely. But we're not supposed to hate people, even evil, wicked people. Hatred in the Sermon on the Mount was compared to murder. 
And in 1 John, he says it's an aspect of walking in darkness. If you hate people, you're not walking in the light, but you're walking in darkness. In fact, he goes on to say a couple chapters later, if anyone says, I love God, but he hates his brother, that's not just like your blood sibling. He's a liar. For he, does not, he who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. In the chapter in between, he says, everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. So how do you overcome hate? I'll give you a couple things that the Bible says here to overcome hate. One is this. In Proverbs 15, it says, A soft answer turns away wrath, but a harsh word stirs up anger. You know, when you just got to snap back at them. They said something, you said something. And it's amazing how quickly it escalates. It just starts jumping off. The easiest thing to do to calm this whole situation down is to give a soft answer. Not that stare at them, daggers right through and kind of thing. You know, not no answer, but a, a soft answer. Jesus also said in the Sermon on the Mount, no one can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or he will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You can't hate something and love it. That's just not the way it works. You say, I love them and I hate them. I read so many stories about that. I was just looking for the one that I had. I hate them because I love them so much. Either you hate them or you love them. That's the thing. You're going to either show goodness and kindness and mercy and love and forgiveness to them or you're not. You say, what do we do to overcome hate? Forgive. It's just that simple. Drop it. Now, why is the serpents and gentle as doves means this. That doesn't mean you trust them again. It may mean you've got to step back. It may mean you've got to protect yourself. Forgiveness does not mean being stupid, but it does mean letting it go. To free them, yes, you do free them, and that's a kindness. God freed you from doing many worse things to him than anybody else has ever done to you. But it doesn't mean you have to pretend they have changed. If they haven't changed, don't trust them. Give them time. See if they do. Find something you love more than something you hate. I think that's the biggest thing to change you from hate along with forgiveness. Love God. Love your family, your friends, other people. Love yourself enough to say, I don't want to keep feeling like this. And Jesus said the hardest example of this, love your enemies. You know, when you get down to that level, you're going to sit there and find the place in your heart for hate is gone. It's not there anymore. Hate can't find any room in you. Even when someone hurts you, you might get angry. You might get mad. You might get disappointed and sad. You, you know, that anger is very different from hate. Hate is anger that's kept in there. Resentment and anger and bitterness all wadded together and aimed at one person or one thing. Anger, you can let go of. But hate means you've held on to it. You can get angry for a while. That's human, that's natural, it's normal, it's not even wrong. Some things are supposed to make us angry. But we're not supposed to aim our hate at people. I'll give you one final example and we'll close. My wife says this about guns. She's got a brother and a father who are NRA instructors very good with them. She's got many, many, many family members that have been in the military, been police. She says, you know what's amazing? I've never seen any of them just up and shoot somebody unless it was in the line of duty, war, being a policeman. They never even aim their gun at somebody except in the line of duty. Why? Because what they understand is this. You don't aim your gun at people. From the earliest days when our little boy had his first toy gun, she said, you don't aim those at people. You know, hate's that way. There are things we can hate. That's why we have that emotion. But we don't aim that hate at people. When we aim that hate at people, it tears them up, it tears us up. And since God loves us, that's not what he's looking for. Thanks for joining us today. Glad you're with us. Enjoy the closing song. Have a wonderful rest of your day. I'll see you again tomorrow.
Touch out of your hand Come shake the 